Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian and this is going to be a tutorial about how you can achieve this effect. I got this idea from a scene in the Matrix when Neo finally realizes he's the one and that he can do whatever the heck he wants inside the Matrix and the walls go all bendy. So let's get into it, shall we? I started out by getting a frame grab from the movie clip and I dropped that into the program called FSpy. Now I'm going to use this image to reproject onto some basic geometry in Blender and get sort of a digital environment going on. If you're interested in learning more about this process with FSpy and everything, I have done some more in-depth tutorials that you can check out, but I'm not going to go into depth on that just now. Once I lined up the lines in FSpy, I imported that right into Blender, and now you can see I've got my camera and the background image and everything's all set up for me. Then with a plane, I went ahead and started modeling out the basic shapes of the hallway here. I think I didn't line up my camera perfectly because it ended up being kind of a wonky looking hallway, but since my camera is locked off, it's okay that it isn't perfect. I'm just using a simple emission shader for the material, and I've got that same image texture applied to the emission shader. Now we can hit U and project from view, but at the moment that won't be the most accurate. You'll get better results if you hit Shift R and scroll up on the mouse wheel to add in a bunch of loop cuts, or just right click and subdivide. Okay, so we have our basic hallway here, but the problem is there's still arms pasted to the wall, so let's get rid of those real quick. In edit mode, I'm going to hit K and summon the knife tool, and with that, I'm just gonna cut out the arm area, select all those faces, and then just scooch that up in the UV editor. And that's not flawless, but it'll work for what we need. And now we can just do that to the other side. Hey, that's looking pretty nice. Let's add in a sphere. But before we do anything with a sphere, let's set up the background footage real quick and make sure that our frame start and end times are in the right spots. Now I'm going to animate the sphere to scale up and be huge and make sure it touches all the sides of the walls. Now with our walls selected, let's enable dynamic paint in the physics tab. And for the type, we're just going to set this to Bruh. canvas. Then let's hit add canvas. And then with our scaly sphere, we're going to set this to be brush. Back to the walls. Let's set this paint drop down to actually be waves. Now when you play the animation, the walls go... Now obviously this could use a little bit of work. If we hit right click and shade smooth, that's a good start. Now I'm just going to mess around with the settings in the dynamic paint a little bit. I think if I turn down the time scale or turn it up, something like that, it makes it act a little bit less like water and a little bit more like jello. Let's give it some more geometry to play with. In the modifiers, subdivision surface is probably what we want. Set that to simple and put it above the other dynamic paint modifier. And now it's starting to look a little bit smoother. And now the sphere animation could use a little bit of work. I'm just going to make that a little bit flatter and make sure it's touching all the walls equally. Nice. Okay, I'm going to apply that modifier now. Important thing, uh, let's bake our water. Other important thing, yeah, let's make sure our sphere isn't showing in the renders. So as you can see here, I did some masks of my arms. I've just done these in front of the sides of the door here where we're going to still have the digital environment just so that my arms can go over top of that. You can see in compositing, they are in fact on top of it. So speaking of compositing, let's talk about this last little part here that I did to sort of finish the project out and tie it all together. First of all, yeah, we started with our movie clip. Um, I also had a duplicate of that, which I just translated and I scooched it over a few pixels. You can see the translate node here. And I put these together in a mix node with this little mask here being the factor of that mix node. And I blurred that a little bit. And you can see, if you look at the before and after, if we zoom in, the before has a little logo there, and I just wanted to remove that so it looked like it was a little bit more clean. And now from here, we have this mix node, which we're just gonna use as our default kind of movie clip thing. Now we have our render layer here, and if I go to a spot where it's warped and render it. I'm using my arms render layer just to make sure that my arms are in front of the scene. And I'm mixing the original footage with the render. And you really can't see that much of a difference here. So it was a bit of wasted work, but you can see the, uh, the side of the arms there. So I guess that was all right. Now with this, I'm just putting it over top of my old footage. So these are kind of pasted over top. I don't know if you saw it or not, but I set the render properties if you go to film and check transparent. That way, parts of your scene that have just like background, if you look here, that part is transparent. This checker texture implies that. Okay, so back to compositing. I just stuck 
this scene over top of my original footage, which you can see with this mix node. If you check this little box here, that will make it so that alpha works. Then I fed this through a hue saturation value node. And you can see I just turned down the saturation a bit because in the Matrix movies, the saturation tends to be quite a bit less, at least when they're in the Matrix. Then I just put that through a color balance node, which I've bumped up the greens a little bit, kind of made it a little bit darker, and you get this effect. So before and after, that's not bad. The last effect I added was some lens distortion, and I turned up this bottom value actually with some keyframes. And if you look here, you can see at this point is when the um, when the walls start warping. And so I've set it to be at the maximum value at that point. And if we look at the render here, it's got this crazy kind of orange and blue stuff around the sides, which looks kind of cool. And so that's up to a 0.1 at that point, and then it just goes back down to zero. And then I just made sure I had my composite node and my viewer node hooked up at the end of that. And that'll get you this. I was thinking this is too clean though, and the super cool thing about having a digital environment is you can make it ridiculously grungy. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, that's it. If you found this helpful and you'd like to keep up to date on what I'm doing and the tutorials I'm putting out, there's a link in the description that will go to a thing that will add you to an email list and you'll get these hydraulics and it'll be cool. And I'll tell you whenever I make a new tutorial. Okay, cheers.